today we are going to study about metallic bonding a metallic bond is formed by the electrostatic attraction between delocalized c of moving electrons and positively charged metal ions if you look at this figure you will see the center positive cation that is written as plus over there and then we have the purple small dots they represent the electrons so there is a electrostatic attraction between this delocalized c of moving electrons and the positively charged cation so the electrons keep on moving and this possess a very strong bond between the positively charged cation let's go down to the characteristic property of metals and these characteristics are mainly due to the free electrons or we call the delocalized electrons the first property that we read is electrical conductivity since the delocalized electrons are free to move and not associated with a single atom they move within the lattice dislodging other like charges electrons in the next atom this process keeps on repeating and moving in the direction of the current towards the positive end and thus electrical conductivity is achieved thermal conductivity that is heat conductivity metals are good conductors of heat heat energy is carried by the free moving electrons malleability malleability is a physical property of a metal that helps it to be hammered pressed or rolled into thin sheets without breaking the property of the metals being malleable is due to its non directional metallic bonds the atoms of metals can easily slide over each other without breaking gold silver aluminum iron and copper are very malleable ductility ductility is also a physical property of a metal and it is a property of a metal to be drawn into thin wires without losing strength or breaking the atoms of metals can easily slide over each other without breaking thus we can draw them into thin wires next is the melting and boiling point metals generally have high melting and boiling point because metallic bonds are very strong and hence large amount of energy is needed to break them then we move down to another type of uh, property which is basically a mixture of alloys now when we make alloys we improve the property of the metals alloys actually metals properties can be improved according to a desire and use by adding metal or non metal when they are molten so let's go to some of the examples of alloys brass brass consists of 70% copper and 30% zinc this makes it harder and it can be used for making utensils they become much more harder than pure copper and it we know the color is like gold bronze bronze copper 90% and tin 10% it again makes it harder than pure copper it is used in making coins bells and utensils stainless steel copper 90% and tin sorry iron 74% and chromium 18% and nickel 8% also many times in many books we read about some percent of very slight some percentage of carbon in it it is used in making utensils surgical instruments and cutlery stainless steel actually becomes harder than pure iron and another thing is that it does not rust solder solder is 50% lead and 50% tin it is used in we can say soldering when uh, lead and tin is mixed together it lowers the melting point of either tin or lead and because of that we can use it for joining or soldering electrical parts next is duralumin duralumin is aluminum based alloy that is 95% aluminum 4% copper ma magnesium is 0.5% and manganese is 0.5% it 
it is used in making aircraft body the good thing about uh, duralumin is usually aluminum has low density metal it's a low density metal that is not very strong when we mix it with 4% copper and the other substances like magnesium and manganese it combines strength and lightness together and it is ideal for aircraft building so therefore we uh, modify the property of the metal into a usefulness taking the strength and also the lightness that is meant for making the aircraft body lastly we study about amalgam amalgam is actually an alloy when one of the component is usually mercury the other compound is generally silver it is used in dental filling so these are some of the common uh, alloys that we can study there are more there are other alloys also but these are some of the alloys which are more commonly used i hope you have understood what is metallic bonding please students if you like the uh, video lessons please subscribe and please like and share thank you